Hey guys, Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So, unlike last week when we had huge breaking news, um, not too much going on this week. A couple news and notes, another release unfortunately, but we'll get into that. So, we know that Impact is going back to Orlando for the uh, 10, from the 10th through the 15th of January to uh, do the next set of tapings. Uh, they released the backstage passes this week, $199 for, you get all the tapings, front row seats, a um, couple months of Global Wrestling Network, swag bag, um, meet and greets, brunch with the knockouts one day, and I believe the first ever miniature golf impact tournament, so that's kind of cool. Um, really good deal for $199, but fortunately I'm not going to be able to make that trip all the way down to Florida for that, but a good deal nonetheless. But before we get to those tapings, we have a huge show planned for January 4th, which is the same day as Wrestle Kingdom. Um, they announced all these matches on Impact this past week. So we have uh, Taiji Ishimori versus Trevor Lee for the X Division Championship. Uh, EC3 defends his Grand Championship in a triple threat against Falaba and Matt Seidel. We have the career versus career match with James Storm versus Dan Lambert. And Eli Drake defends his global championship against Alberto El Patron. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a huge match, uh, a huge show, I should say, with a bunch of good matches on there. Uh, the next two weeks, I believe, are the year in review episodes, um, part one and part two. So it's good they get a little break around the holidays. Uh, and uh, like I said, it's just the refresh that's happening in January, so... Uh, we do have a couple, uh, actually one release this past week. Uh, this is a backstage release, uh, obviously due to all the cost-cutting efforts by Impact. And it's, unfortunately, these things are going to happen since the company is ready to change their uh, layout. But uh, they have released director David Sahadi. He was responsible for uh, directing Impact Wrestling's video features and the uh, pre-pay-per-view hype videos. Uh, he's been with the company since March of 2006, and before coming to Impact Wrestling, he worked with WWE as the director of on-air promotion. So when they signed him back in 2006, this was apparently a big thing. So it's tough to see a guy like this go because they always excelled in this department. But again, it's cost-cutting. So last week I spoke about the EC3 and Bobby Lashley rumors about them leaving when their contract is up, and apparently Meltzer had said that the expectation is that Bobby Lashley and EC3 will leave when their contracts are up, and one or both will end up in WWE. So I would say it's more likely that Lashley will end up in WWE with his um, connection with Paul Heyman. And then uh, one of the Impact Insiders on Reddit had posted saying that EC3 will be staying, so it's 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 too, too tough to call right now. I guess we will see when we get closer to their contracts expiring. Um, so uh, WWE recently signed Rockstar Spud, and he's apparently supposed to debut pretty soon, but Impact Wrestling officials are apparently not very happy with him signing with WWE. So according to the Wrestling Observer, Observer Newsletter, uh, Impact spent $20,000 in fees to correct the issues with Spud's visa that prevented him from working in the United States. Uh, two weeks after all these issues were sorted out, Spud reportedly asked for his release. Uh, apparently these paperwork issues with his visa were caused by the Dixie Carter era regime at Impact. So I can understand their frustration, but they're just fixing... Um, messes and that's that's kind of where impact is what impact is going to have to be doing um so this week's impact apparently drew its lowest numbers on pop tv besides i think 2015 when they did re recap shows um it only drew 161,000 viewers i know these numbers aren't important to most people but it's it's definitely something to look at um this was down from last week's 226,000 viewers uh, the, the only thing I'm guessing here is they were up against the WWE Tribute for the Troops show. I'm guessing the show is that Impact has a bunch of casual viewers, and because WWE had programming on the same night, that that's where they flocked to. So I'm not really surprised by this, or people just kind of like, you know what, I'm not going to watch it now. I'm going to wait till January when they refresh everything. Um, 
So, like I said, just a little bit of news. And this is probably the biggest thing of the week. Apparently, according to Meltzer, uh, Impact has a planned pay-per-view for April 22nd. Uh, no details on where this will be held uh, I or the name of the pay-per-view. Probably going to be either Sacrifice or Lockdown. So it's, it's good that they're going to plan some pay-per-views uh, rather than the uh, one-night-only specials. So, like I said, not much going on this week, but that's all I got for you. And until next time, if you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.